This is a very unusual problem. I've never come across a problem like this before. I've just spotted a mistake. I think I'll keep that in the edit. And this is, I think, a crucial tip. If you are taking the PAT entrance exam, feel free to... Let's consider a tank which is actually filled with two liquids. Half of the tank being separated by a thin transparent membrane and we're going to have a liquid of refractive index N1 on the left and then a liquid with refractive index N2 on the right. The refractive index N1 is bigger than N2. Outside we have air with a refractive index of just one. And here is the interesting part which I've not seen in any other question. But if I have an observer who is standing above the pole at a height h, so our observer is here, and then they drop a ring along the membrane. As the ring is falling at a certain apparent depth, the ring will appear to the observer to actually stop descending. And we need to find this apparent depth. We're also given the dose here L, and if our ring is initially here, we're also given some angles in the question. Hmm, this is really unusual. It's almost like the critical angle, but kind of in reverse. So as this thing is actually descending, the only way that it will appear to be at the same apparent depth is if this line here is descending, it becomes vertical and more vertical and more vertical. And eventually the rays are just trapped along the boundary. So let's apply Snell's law at this boundary. The way I'm thinking about this, please let me know if you're thinking the same, is if there's some refraction between this boundary, then this means that some of the rays will be um, emerging from N2 and then into N1. So this means that rather than sort of going there, they're gonna bend a little bit more towards the actual normal. So we're gonna be applying Snell's law to this interface. We can say that N2 multiplied by the sine of the uh, angle, let's just call that theta1 will be equal to N1 sine theta2. So just from the geometry of the problem, we're given this angle, let's say that this angle here is 90 degrees, meaning that our angle with respect to the normal for the refraction, in other words, our theta two just here, it's just gonna be 90 take away theta i. So we can just write over here sine of 90, 90 degrees take away theta i. Now, what about our angle? I think the basic idea here is essentially total internal reflection in reverse. As this thing here is descending, then our incoming ray can actually get trapped along the boundary, which is what this question is all about. So I'm gonna set um, my theta one to just be equal to 90 degrees, which is just one. Okay, so this here should give me that N2 is going to be N1 sine of 90 take away theta i. So I can immediately spot that this here is equal to the cosine of theta i. So this here is one condition from one boundary. We actually have two sort of boundaries where the ray is going to go through. And um, interesting things happen at both of the boundaries. We can apply Snell's law here as well. And what we can say is that N1 multiplied by sine theta i is gonna be equal to the refractive index of air, which is one multiplied by the sine of the angle of refraction, which is just gonna be theta o. Okay, so how are we actually going to proceed? Now, between those two equations, I notice that I've got cos of theta i, and here I've got sine of theta i. So let's just try to relate sine and cos, which kind of typically works in this situation. So I'm going to use the famous trig identity that uh, sine squared plus cos squared is equal to one, and then cos is equal to the square root of one minus sine squared of theta i. 
Okay, uh, tell you what, let's even get rid of the square root sign. So I'm gonna go n2 squared is equal to n1 squared. What we're left with is one minus sine squared theta i. Okay, so we're kind of getting somewhere. Now notice what I have here. Here I've got, here I've got n1 sine theta i. Uh, let's just expand the brackets, minus n1. I'm about to do a mistake. Can you spot it? Squared sine theta i. But this equation here is telling me that n i sine theta i is just equal to sine theta o. So I'm gonna go n2 squared is equal to n1 squared. Take away, that's just gonna be sine theta o. Okay, so we actually get this expression that n1 squared take away n2 squared is equal to sine theta o. This is what the equation is actually telling us, but ultimately what we want to figure out in the question is the apparent depth at which it appears to stop descending. So in general, the apparent depth is going to be given by the continuation of this angle along here, the continuation of this ray over here. And if this angle here is theta naught with respect to the vertical, that should make this one theta naught. So let's give some symbols across here. And this is, I think, a crucial tip. If you are taking the PAT entrance exam, feel free to write down variables which are not given in the question, but are very important for the solution. For instance, this distance from here to here, which is not really given in the question, is really important. So I'm just gonna call that H subscript A for apparent height. Okay. So we know that this distance here is going to be L. Now let's just use some basic trigonometry. So we can say that sine theta naught is gonna be the opposite, which is L. Sine is gonna be the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, which is just gonna be the square root of L squared plus H A squared. We're, we're definitely getting somewhere. This here is the apparent height. And then uh, once I figure out an expression for this, all I need to do is subtract this distance. Basically, we're gonna get this distance, then we're gonna take away this one to get our answer. Okay, let's do this. So what we're gonna get is n1 squared take away n2 squared is gonna be equal to L over uh, yeah, root L squared plus. Oh, and look at that. I've just spotted a mistake. I think I'll keep that in the edit to show you guys where you're potentially likely to do a mistake. But just something as simple as carrying the uh, square can be really important. This here is sine squared, which means that this equation here is going to change to L squared divided by L squared uh, plus H A squared. We, what we want to really do is just rearrange for H A squared. So H A squared is then going to be L squared over N one squared divided by N two, take away N two squared, and then let's take away L two, uh, L squared again. So this means that H A squared will be, let's take L squared, in brackets, we get one over n1 squared, take away n2 squared, take away one. Okay, um, we can probably tidy this expression up. So let's see. So this here will be equal to L squared and then one over n1 squared. take away n2 squared, and then take away n1 squared minus n2 squared over n1 squared, take away n2 squared. This means that for to tidy up HA will be equal to L, and then the square root of one minus n1 squared plus 
n2 squared, divide that by the common denominator, which is n1 squared, take away uh, n2 squared. Now, I think this is right. The final step, because we're being asked about the apparent depth at which this happens, uh, let's just call this distance d, and all we need to say is that the apparent depth, actually just call it dA, uh, just so that we're consistent, dA should be ha take away h, which means that it will be equal to this expression. Okay, so a really good thing that I quite like doing for PAT exam questions is to do a sanity check near the end. So what are some things that actually break the equation? So n1 cannot really equal to n2. If that's the case, all of our mathematics and refraction will not actually work. So this is probably um, a good sign. Our equation kind of breaks when uh, that happens. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm particularly curious on whether you have actually seen this type of question before in this phenomena. The other thing to note is that this is probably not very uh, physical question because in reality it's just assuming that this will be receiving the same amount of light uh, as it travels further down but in reality a lot of the light is going to be absorbed as it's going sort of further and further down meaning that less of it that it should get sort of dimmer and dimmer but this is a very unusual problem i've never come across a problem like this before hopefully you've enjoyed that and if you're preparing for the path what you should definitely do is check out my ultimate guide which contains almost two hours of problem solving for this exam that will really help you prepare have a look over here